This video is about bulk density, which is one of the physical properties of a soil. You might recall that density is calculated as mass over volume. So the bulk density of the soil is determined by weighing a soil sample that's completely dry and dividing that weight or the mass by the volume of the sample. Figuring out the bulk density is important because it's kind of a measure of how much pore space there is. Suppose these are the same volume, meaning they occupy the same amount of space, but this one on the left here has larger aggregates, a lot more space in between the solid particles, whereas in this sample on the right, they're all crammed in together, so you have a lot less space. The pore space is important because this is where the water enters the soil, this is where the oxygen enters the soil, and it moves around for roots to access. This is also the space that the roots grow into. Comparatively on this side, because it's more compact and it's denser, there's a lot more solid particles within the same volume. It's a lot harder because these spaces are much smaller. Another potential issue is if you have like a gas pipeline leak or something like that, the gas isn't able to efficiently move out into the atmosphere. It gets trapped and that can end up killing your plants. A soil that has more organic matter tends to have a lower bulk density. The organic matter promotes biological activity. The glues, the physical and chemical forces can all help unite these particles into these larger aggregates so that you can get more of the pore space around them. Roots are sensitive to increases in bulk density. If you're constantly going over the same area, the soil will gradually get compacted. It's not even just heavy stuff like cars or machinery. Even a person can exert a lot of force if you're constantly going over the same area. This is worse when the soil's moist because the water acts as a lubricant and helps that structure get smushed apart. As an arborist, there are many opportunities for you to increase the bulk density of the soil in the places where you work. Just walking around or driving a truck into that area will be enough to compact the soil. Ideally, limit your work to dry seasons, and if you have the option, use equipment that's on tracks instead of tires because the tracks spread the weight of the machine over a larger area. You may also end up doing tree work in compacted soils, like planting new trees. You can give the new tree a much better chance at getting its roots out into the soil if you dig a much larger hole at least two times the size of the pot so that you can pre-loosen the soil and give the roots an avenue to get out to the rest of the area. If your company has a compressed air digging device, you may end up getting called to loosen soil in places where severe compaction has happened. It is tedious and time-consuming work, very expensive, so it's much better to prevent this compaction than to try to fix it later after it's been done. A very, very straightforward way is to spread a thick layer of wood chips over the soil. Ideally, the wood chips from a tree service are going to be the best because they're larger, they tend to lock together better, and they have a mix of leaves, twigs, and things like that, so everything breaks down at different rates. In addition to acting as a physical buffer, and the organic matter creates more aggregates and slowly improves the soil structure.